Sonica here with Sniff Dog. Does your dog run away the moment you let them off their leash? Are you missing out on some fun adventures together because they simply cannot be trusted? If you haven't watched part one of this video, make sure to press pause, watch part one, and then join us for part two of how to get your dog to come when called. At Sniff Dog, we're here to teach you how to speak dog. If you can have a better understanding of your dog, you can have a relationship built off trust and fun. We want to come on this wonderful journey of pet ownership with you to help empower the love and connection between you and your pup. Now, before we get started, I wanted to give a really quick shout out to Mr. Woodley at Golden Van City for following us along on our journey and being such great supporters of Sniff Dog. You guys are always at the top of your game with training and we so appreciate your involvement and sharing all of our content. If you want to see some super cute photos of Woodley, make sure to give them some love on Instagram. Now, if you want to be featured in our shout out, make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel and leave us a comment there telling us all the things you want to learn more about. Now let's get you started on your learning. Today we're going to discuss part two of how to make sure your dog chooses you when they are off leash. If you have achieved this already, you should be mega proud of yourself because getting your dog to choose you when they have all the other options in the world is actually a really difficult task. But don't worry, with the right training tips and doing your homework, I promise you it's totally achievable to have your dog off leash and listening to you when you ask them to come. If you want to get one step closer to having your dog off leash and listening to you, don't forget to download the training tip sheet. It's full of all of today's extra little tidbits that will make sure that you are successful once and for all. And as always, stay to the end to watch the bloopers. Today's three training tips are tip number one, practice come in a green space or a beachy area on a long line from 10 feet away maximum with no extra distractions. Tip number two, practice come in a green space or a beachy area on a long line from 20 feet away with mild distractions at a distance. And tip number three is practice come in a green space or a beachy area with 30 feet on a long line with moderate distractions around your dog. All right, what you're gonna need for today's video is a 30 foot long training leash, not a retractable leash. You're also going to need about a cup to two cups of your dog's most favorite, desired, and well-loved piece of food. So this could be chicken breast, steak, cheese, something that doesn't hurt your dog's stomach that they're bananas for. I should probably also add that you are going to need no shame at all because we are going to be acting like fools to get our dogs to come when called. So leave your shame at the door, please. Okay, so you're ready for tip number one. We are going to be practicing our recall with 10 foot distance on a long line in a new outdoor pretty distracting environment. Now green grass and beaches and sort of all the places in between are very distracting to our dogs because there's so many smells present. And birds will show up and squirrels will show up, maybe some dogs in the distance or people playing fetch far away. You wanna make sure that you're doing this exercise in the outdoor stimulating space, but not with those extra added distractions like dogs off leash or kids screaming and running around. You wanna make sure that just the environment is the distracting part and not a whole bunch of other extra stuff. So choosing the space you do this step in is really quite important. Don't go try in too distracting of an environment or you're just gonna undo all your hard work that you did from video number one. So my tip would be to spend about 10 minutes walking in this new area. Maybe it's a familiar place to them, but you haven't been there and practiced recall before. Let them sniff around and explore. Make sure they're not super, super hyper or else they're not gonna be able to use their brains and hear you. But walk around for 10 minutes or so and once you've been there for a little while, then you can commence this training exercise. So when your dog is their nose to the ground but isn't totally committed to anything yet or they're just kind of meandering in the space, catch them off guard, use your big Fido come cue and then back up making kissy noises excitedly. Remember, your dog should only be 10 feet from you when you practice this. When they come to you when you're done cheering and they're at your feet, say yes and give them a whole bunch of those really special treats. If they do not come, it means you're not being silly enough to compete with the environment. So you have to bring a lot of energy, no shame, uh, and a lot of weird noises and movements and gestures to try to get them to choose you. And you gotta do whatever it takes to win. Because if you call, you must follow through. They're only 10 feet from you. So if you can't win in that circumstance, how are you gonna win when they're actually off leash? Okay, so on that note, sometimes your timing will be really shitty and you'll accidentally call them at a bad time or the wrong time or something will pop up right when you call them and it makes it really difficult for them to choose you. In that case, if you cheerlead like 
a crazy person for 30 full seconds and they still can't choose you, go stick a treat straight to their nose, one of the good ones, and lure them that 10 feet back to you while backing up making happy voices. Then give them the treat. We want them to learn that it is in their best interest to listen to you, but also that no recall will be ignored. You cannot let them learn that, meh, I'll just come later. We have to follow through within those 30 seconds and get them at our feet, no matter what it takes to show them they should listen. And it actually is in their best interest too, because they get the good stuff when they do. That is not the time to recall when he's already pursuing the bird. But now that he's taken a break, I can try. Cedar, come! So hang out there, walk across the field, walk across the beach, let them get 10 feet from you and get curious about something and then call them back. Feed them, keep on walking, a few minutes later, repeat. I want them to not have any idea when that come cue is gonna happen, but when they hear it, they turn around on a dime and choose you because you're high energy, you're very clear and consistent that when they come, they get the good stuff. There's really no such thing as training this too much. Your dog might get really sick of the game if you spend two hours at the field doing this. So the more sporadic you call, the better. Uh, being in tune with your dog's energy and making sure they're in a playful, hyper mood, not too hyper, but if they're sleepy and lazy, their motivation to spin and come to you is gonna be much lower. I personally recommend that you bring a long line on all of your walks with your dog and kind of sporadically find little green spaces or beachy areas where you're able to practice this for five to 10 minutes, even 15, 20 minutes would be a good training session to get in every day at totally new places every time. Maybe if you're there for 15 minutes, you call them 15 times, completely randomly, so they never know when it's gonna happen. Quick pro tip here is don't feed your dog dinner before you go on these walks. Make sure that you practice come when your dog is hungry and in medium to high energy levels. Okay, you're ready for training tip number two, which is to simply add more distance and maybe even a little bit more distraction to practicing your come recall when you're in an outdoor fun environment. If it hasn't been made clear, the more distance you add and the more distractions that are present, the harder it is for your dog to A, remember that you exist and you're there, and B, listen when you ask them to choose you and come when called. And if you feel like this training is super micro slow and you're bored, that's because we're setting your dog up for success. We can't have success in the home and then let them off leash out of the home. That's exactly how your dog learns how not to come when called. Now, if my long-term recall goal is to have my dog walking in the forest with me like Cedar does and call off of dogs in the distance, if I don't know that they're safe or if they're friendly, then I have to be able to start with calling him off of dogs that are really far distance away before I can expect him to do it when he's 10 feet away from them. The closer he is to the distraction, the harder it's going to be for him to choose me. The farther the distraction is away and the closer he is to me, the easier doing that recall will be. So we're gonna start there. You're gonna start with your dog on a long line in the same sort of distracting environments with the distractions way off in the distance. So you could choose a flock of birds over there, somebody playing fetch with their dog way across a field, or even a dog park way on the other side of the training space that you've chosen. You're gonna keep walking across the field for 10 minutes, let them get used to the smells and sounds, and when they're not paying attention to you and they're not totally committed to those distractions that you and they both know are over there, you're gonna practice your come cue. So you might wait for them to lift their head and look up towards the distraction and then use that as the time to practice your distracted come recall. They should be about 20 feet away from you when you practice this version. And the better they get at it, the closer that you can actually walk them towards those distractions in the distance. So you're gonna start really far from them, recall off, recall off, recall off over the course of 15 minutes or so. And every time they're successful, you're gonna get closer and closer to those distractions that you know are way across the field and not coming uncontrollably towards you. Now that we are introducing another 10 feet of distance and more natural distractions in the environment, your cue is gonna to have to be bigger and louder 
and more firm and maybe even more excitable. And the noises and the movements that you do to catch your dog's attention to win against those competing distractions is gonna have to be totally ridiculous. So again, don't forget to be silly here. Go big or go home. You've gotta make sure that you beat those distractions. Now, if you're too serious and you're not comfortable being completely ridiculous outside in public, which I have no problem with, you can walk with a squeaky toy if you want to try to catch your dog's attention and then run in a different direction if they're not paying attention to you. But a squeaky toy or your voice can be really incentivizing and fun motivation for your dog to spin off of the distractions, turn and come to you. But please try it without the squeaky toy, don't cheat. So this is now where you're gonna spend your 15 minutes to 20 minutes of recall training every day off of distractions way off in the distance with the goal of getting closer and closer towards them. Okay, if you're successful with 20 feet with mild distractions in the distance, you are ready for tip three, which is to go to 30 feet, calling them off of moderate distractions, which means you're closer to those distractions than you were before, and you've given your dog an extra 10 feet on their long line. This is hard stuff for your dog. So exactly as I insinuated before, you're gonna get closer to the distractions and practice Fido come, and then lots of silly movements and noises to try to get them to come to you away from those distractions. If at any point they cannot recall back to you, they cannot hear you, you try all the noises, the squeaky toy, you run up to them, you lure them with treats to try to get them to come that 20 or 30 feet back to you and you still can't win and they're like, lady, I don't even care about the chicken, there's a bird over there and I'm gonna get it. If you're in that circumstance, just go back a step. Go to being farther from the distractions. Go to practicing more frequently with milder distractions farther in the distance. You can always go back a step in training. And depending on what's going on in your dog's life, you might just need to do that because they have an upset stomach for a week so they're not hungry for the food. Or you traveled and came home and now they're a little bit out of sorts with their schedule. So their recall will ebb and flow. You've got to get comfortable knowing, oh shit, I shouldn't have asked for that. That was too hard of a recall. So if everything fails and you're like, oh no, they just ignored my recall, reel them in gently like a fish on that long line. So at least then we take away their opportunity of going for the bird and getting at the bird after ignoring our recall. We do not want them to get any life rewards after they've ignored a recall because then they learn if I don't listen, I actually get what I wanted. Okay, so let's say you've been putting all this time in, everything's going really well, you're on tip number three, video number two, your dog is progressing beautifully, they're listening every time you call them, when you call, that's when you're sure. When you're about 100% sure they will listen and they're quick to listen, that's when you can start actually dropping the long line and taking them to more and more distracting environments while still seeing, can I get that same result even though I'm not holding the leash and totally in control here. Once you start dropping the long line and they're doing really well with it, you can shorten that long line and switch from 30 foot to 15 foot. Once they're good with the 15 foot long line and you're really not feeling like you need to manage them too much through the use of that long line, you can switch to a six foot leash. Once they're listening on a six foot leash dragging around, then you can start unclipping them fully and practicing recall in more and more distracting environments while ensuring that they are safe to be fully off that leash. Now don't push to that step because it takes only one time of you thinking they're safe, letting them off leash and then them taking off on you. That's a major safety issue. So don't push too fast and don't put them into circumstances that they're not ready for if they're not safe to be there. to leave for you to get treats good boy friendly reminder you can always go back a step so say I let cedar off leash tomorrow in the forest and he ignores one of my recalls and I'm a little annoyed but then I think to myself it wasn't really a fair recall I called him off of a squirrel which I would never do at this point 
I'm gonna the next day make sure to be more careful about when I call, but I also might put that long line on him so if he does take off over a squirrel, I can go pick up the long line, reel him in and take away his freedom for a couple of minutes just to punish him for not listening to me. So if you have a prey driven dog, have realistic expectations. This will probably take you way longer to achieve a recall. And then also if your dog is super obsessed with other dogs or younger and adolescent and very social, getting that recall off of dogs or in the middle of play even, it's unrealistic for a long time for you to get there. So just be fair. If you don't think it's a fair recall, go get them and remove them and take away their choice. Because if you give them choice, the likelihood of them listening in those circumstances is very low. All right, here are your reminders of things to avoid. Do not call them if they are unlikely to listen. Do not call them if they are mid pursuit of a dog or something that is prey-like. Another time when not to recall. The chances of him coming to me right now are zero. Do not call them with your special come word if you do not have the good stuff on you to feed them when they do respond accurately. Do not repeat the cue. I repeat, do not repeat the cue. You say come one time and you mean it. Do not ever call them to come and then punish them when they come to you if it was a bit too late of a recall. They are not more likely to come back next time any faster if they figure out coming to you is not good for them. Lastly, and very importantly, do not stand still after you call your dog. You need to move away from them to magnetize them to choose you. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you found it helpful. Don't forget to download the training tip sheet that we made for you with reminders on all of today's little tips. If you're watching from YouTube, please subscribe to our channel. Press the notify button so you find out when we release new videos every week and leave comments telling us what you want to learn more about. Enjoy the bloopers. Are you hard at work? Are you hard at work? The magic. But bubbly. That's a good boy. Uh, practice come in a green space or the ocean. The ocean? Ah! Licorice tea. So good. So good.